I'll be honest with you. I love the Evo 3D. I love the Photon 4G. Those 4G fast dual core phones will always have a special place in my heart. But mom, grandma, all those people, they don't really need 4G high-end phones. That's what the Samsung Conquer 4G is for. It's available now on Sprint for $99.99 and it's Sprint's first sub $100 4G device. And it's packing a pretty decent feature set as well. One gigahertz processor, 3.2 megapixel camera, front facing camera, but best of all, it has 4G connectivity and it's 100, 100 bucks. Should you get this? Should you go with the Evo 4G, maybe the Evo Shift 4G, which are probably down in that $79.99 range right now, somewhere between you know 80 and 100 bucks. We'll find out in the full review, but first, special thanks to my boys at Best Buy, because when you walk into Best Buy, you'll walk out working, they'll help you set up your email, your web, so when you get this for mom, for grandma, for your girlfriend, whoever, your email, your web, all that good stuff will be set up at Best Buy Mobile. That's enough of that, let's get into it. Let's see, is this the phone you should get on Sprint for 100 bucks, or should you go with something like the Evo 3D, or the Evo 4G rather, or the Evo Shift 4G? We'll find out in the full review, which starts right now. So here's the Samsung Conquer 4G. It's available now on Sprint, and it has a couple of big benefits going for it. First of all, it's $100. So $99 out the door gets you a 4G smartphone, and yet yeah, it may not be the highest end in terms of specs. It doesn't have a dual-core processor or an 8-megapixel camera or anything like that, but it's a great, perhaps, first-time smartphone or perhaps for somebody that's migrating from a feature phone or somebody that's coming over maybe from a BlackBerry and wants to try the Android platform. It's decent for a lot of different crowds and a lot of different demographics. So you have a couple of benefits. One, 99 bucks with 4G connectivity, I guess that's one and a half maybe. And two, it's uh, it's not running Samsung's TouchWiz user interface. And that's a really big win for it because you know it has a one gigahertz processor, which is the same processor we've seen, even though this one's a Snapdragon processor and uh, the past Samsung devices have had Hummingbird processors. You know, the TouchWiz UI has kind of bogged it down a little bit. You've seen some lag on devices like the Droid Charge and on some of the older Galaxy S stuff, like the Epic 4G perhaps. You saw a little bit of lag with extended use. You don't really see it here because of the stock build or nearly stock build of Android 2.3. It's good to go out of the box and even though it's you know a decidedly a mid-range device, it's pretty fast in all, uh, in all aspects. So anyway, you know, stock Android build here with the exception of Sprint ID and you can see that down here in place of the uh, where the browser would be on a stock Android device. And you have the option to uh, choose your ID if you want to. So it is a uh, mid-range device. It fits the bill for Sprint ID even though kind of you know Sprint ID has, doesn't really have a mission anymore because it's on Photon and some of the other high-end devices, which I found kind of uh, kind of interesting. But anyway, five home screens on this, so you're going to see you know a similar arrangement here to a stock Android device. And let's go over the specs pretty quickly here. One gigahertz Snapdragon processor, like I said, it's a single core processor. You've got some physical buttons down here instead of capacitive, but you're running Android 2.3. And then you have a 3.2 megapixel camera on the back. So nothing to write home about in terms of the camera department. You do have that little again 3.2 megapixel shooter with uh, a flash as well. And then you have the front facing camera so you can use, you know, assuming you're connected to 4G, you can use Fring or some of these video chat applications and chat with your uh, with your friend. So it has a 1500 milliamp hour battery in the back. You know, 1500 milliamp, uh, milliamp hours typically isn't that long. I mean, it's kind of a nice little starting point for an Android device. It's where a lot of places, a lot of uh, companies will start in that 15 or 1600 milliamp hour range. But uh, with this, given the smaller display, which is 3.5 inches, by the way, I think you'll be perfectly fine with uh, making it through a day. I know I've been using it uh, in the past couple of days since I received it, and uh, I'm able to make it through a day pretty easily uh, with moderate use, you know, tweeting, text messaging, making a few phone calls, browsing the Android market things like that. So, you know, it's not, again, not the highest end device, but it's pretty well spec'd, and uh, for 100 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. And I just realized there's still, I think, a sticker right there, but that's okay. Volume rocker over here, lanyard hole over there, camera shortcut button on the right, and then on the top you have your uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you have your power button, and then, like I said, down at the bottom, uh, or the capacitive buttons, or the uh, physical buttons, rather, down here, and you have your micro USB charging port uh, down here, which, yes, I'm cheating and charging it with a, uh, with a BlackBerry cable, but that's okay. Anyway, stock build, like I said, of our almost stock build of Android 2.3, and you're going to see those colors, those new color schemes that you see in the Nexus S line and uh, the G2X and some of the other devices that are running stock builds of Android. You can see here the gray and the black. It's kind of changed from uh, stock Android 2.2. And uh, somebody in the comments in one of my last videos said, count how many times he says stock or vanilla. So the count's on, guys. I'm counting on you to uh, keep count because I'm not keeping count. So you can see here... Uh, Five home screens, comes typical with stock one, Android uh, 2.3. And then the menu, you get some Sprint stuff, but otherwise it's pretty plain Jane. You get books, of course, and that's a Google thing. You get uh, Market, which we'll talk about a little bit later, probably in part two of the video, a new Android Market. You get My Files, which is a Samsung thing. Quick Video pre-installed 
And then some Sprint stuff. You get Sprint Hotspot, Sprint ID, Sprint Mobile Wallet, Sprint Zone, and, uh, and that's it in terms of the Sprint stuff. And I think most of this can be uninstalled. We'll take a look. But Sprint Hotspot for a $100 device, out of the gate, 4G connectivity, Sprint Hotspot capabilities, I'd say that's a pretty good deal in my book. And let's see here in applications just to see if the, uh, the Sprint stuff can be uninstalled. Uh, let's go in here. And those are some pretty core Sprint applications, like uh, Sprint ID, I'm sure, can't be uninstalled. We'll go down here and look and see if we can remove something like uh, Sprint Mobile Wallet. Nope, can't remove that. Sprint Zone, Dutch, you can remove that either. So all these are kind of the, the tutorial one you can remove. Sprint ID, obviously, you can't remove. But when you get into some of the ones like Sprint TV, Sprint Navigation, some of the ones that come on the higher end handsets, you can uh, remove those if you desire. Sprint's really listen to their customers with that. But let's jump right in and take a look at the keyboard. Now, this is running a 3.5 inch or has a 3.5 inch display, rather. So it's on par with the iPhone, not necessarily in terms of resolution, but in terms of overall screen size. So we'll bring up messaging and uh, bring up a new message here. And you can see it comes pre-installed with the, uh, the gingerbread keyboard. And there's a little bit of a difference there versus the Android 2.2 keyboard. This keyboard, the keys are a little bit more, are a little bit fatter. Uh, they're not as rectangular in shape, if you will, not as tall and narrow as they used to be. They're more short and uh, kind of square. And you can see Swipe is pre-installed as well. So if you enjoy Swipe, you can take advantage of Swipe. Never been my thing, but a lot of people do like Swipe. So it's there if you'd like it. Anyway, gingerbread keyboard here. And you can see, like I said, the keys are a little bit smaller. And you have this orange and black color scheme, which is... Uh, and I guess green too, if you count the new uh, the new area there just above uh, in the notifications bar area. New uh, signal strength indicator, new battery indicator. And I wouldn't really say new because gingerbread's been out for a while, but you get the idea. So we're gonna say the quick brown fox. What are we gonna put him in today? What adventure are we gonna send him on? The quick brown fox is hanging out in San Francisco. Hanging out in Dan Francisco. So you get the idea, you know, it's a 3.5 inch display and uh, the gingerbread keyboard has never really been one of my favorites anyway. I mean, it takes a long time. The learning curve is a couple weeks to get used to the gingerbread keyboard, but with this smaller 3.5 inch display, it really makes for a challenge trying to type on it. Of course, you can use it in landscape mode as well. And we'll wait for it to transition the quick. And it's a little bit easier, but still, when you look at something like that, this in comparison to the G2X with a four inch display or perhaps a Photon with a 4.3 inch display, those extra screen, uh, that extra screen real estate really makes a difference when you're, uh, when you're working on this type of stuff. So if you're typing long emails, you're somebody that sends emails on your phone, a lot of text messages, this may not be the device for you unless you're interested in using Swipe. So keep that in mind, play with it in the store if you get a chance uh, on the keyboard front and see if you can really handle it long term, you know, with extended use. But let's take a look at the browser and load up there. And, uh, Sprint's been having some data issues in uh, the Charlotte area, and actually in a lot of different cities across the US, their data speeds are just abysmal. And you can see, even though I have 3G connectivity, we'll see how long it takes to load the page. Sometimes it's right away, and sometimes it takes uh, quite a bit of time. So we'll wait for it to load up here. See what we can do. Uh, wait for it to load. I don't want to waste a lot of camera time, so keep in mind, it's 2.05 right now, and I'm gonna cut it until it comes up. We're still loading up over here, and you can see it's 2.12 now, so it's taking quite some time. But you can see pinch to zoom, even while loading, is uh, relatively quick. I mean, there's a little bit of a lag, but still, for a uh, for one gigahertz processor, it's definitely acceptable. And we can throw it over here into landscape mode so you can see the quick transitions. Definitely moves pretty quickly, and let's go up here to the logo so you can see pinch to zoom capabilities. So you can see it's not too bad at all. Again, for a mid-range device, it's right on par with uh, some of the other mid-range devices on the market. And that is, uh, that's certainly a good thing. Let's take a look at the Android market here and uh, load it up because I want to show you the new Android market. It changed a couple weeks ago and it's still, I don't think it's rolling out anymore. I think it's actually rolled out to all the Android devices, but if you don't have this yet, you should definitely be getting it within the, at least the next few days, uh, if not sooner. So you can see here's the new Android market and it's organized by apps, games, books, excuse me, and movies as well with some shortcuts. And they, you know, they do this boxy thing. It look, reminds me a lot of Microsoft's Metro UI where the boxes are all different shapes, different sizes, and it's intended to draw the eye in a little bit. So you have the rectangular one here, the shorter ones over here, and they're kind of off center, like this is more of a square, and so it draws the eye into the particular pictures or whatever it is you're looking at. We'll take a look at apps, and like I said, you can do books and movies as well, which is nice. So we'll go into apps and take a look here, and it's loading up, and of course it's uh, taking its sweet time. And we'll wait for it to load. And then brings up featured, and then we'll go over here to top paid, and then top free. And you can see YouTube, Facebook for Android, Google Maps, Pandora. I'm just showing you some examples here. We'll go into uh, YouTube and take a look at that and wait for it to load up. 
and you can see that uh, there it is. And it says open update, and of course the description, what's new, it's gonna show some screenshots here when it decides to load. And then of course you have your reviews, your videos, more by Google Developer, and then related and market content. So it's a nice organized flow, and you can see what it looks like in landscape as well, where it transitions, and you can scroll up and down from there. So it looks really nice, and of course from there you can share, you can search, and then you can go back if you want to. So all in all, they did a really good job with this. And I like the square layout and the stars right there on the main screen. And I like having the ability to easily click and see the screenshots and see the, uh, the descriptions. So overall, clean looking market and a nice change for Android.